Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure to uh, take part in this 20th anniversary of the uh, IACM. Today, we're talking about um, cannabis medicine and the WHO, a bit of history of international law, understanding international law on cannabis, the convention, the scheduling, and what the expert committee on drug dependence of the WHO has been, um, has been recommending on cannabis that has been quite present in the media. Um, the convention, the treaty, the international uh, framework of international law that uh, regulates um, medical cannabis is uh, composed of two treaties, the single convention of 1961 and the 71 convention. They control certain medicines um, that have a potential for dependence and so-called ill effects. Those are the narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. And uh, these two treaties, among other instruments, are the basis of most, almost every um, national policy or legislation for the control of this medicine, for so-called drug control. So it's really important to understand that these conventions are somehow a framework um, for the regulation of uh, medicines. So they concern only certain substances when they are used for medical purposes or scientific purposes. They do not regulate, they um, apply no legal regime to these same substances when they are used for so-called industrial purposes, which are other than medical and scientific purposes. So when uh, these substances, these medicines are used um, either in research or in uh, you know, medicine, in clinical practice, they are controlled under this convention depending on the schedule in which they are uh, listed. Which uh, leads us to the schedules. The schedules of the 61 and 71 convention are uh, somehow complex. Maybe let's begin with the 71 convention in, in green here. So the schedules are uh, basically from the top to the bottom they contain the so at the top we will have the substances with least medical uh, value and most potential for harms at the same time the substances uh, in the schedules at the at the top will have uh, more mandatory control and stricter controls apply compared to the the substances uh, listed in the schedules at the bottom and so for the 71 is quite simple for the 61 convention however uh, we see that it's a, a bit more complex. We have basically two schedules, one and two, and then complementary lists, schedule four and schedule three, that, that are here to reaffirm stricter control or uh, provide some uh, more um, uh, easy uh, access, um, um, some exemption in the case of schedule three, which gives us this simplified uh, vision of the different levels of control that apply depending on the schedules. Uh, so from the most stringent at the top to the um, most liberal, let's say, um, at the at the bottom. These are again re uh, different tiers of legal regime applying to medicines when used for uh, medical research or medical purposes. The cannabis drugs that are listed in this, this schedule. So it's in interesting to really um, understand the fact that according to international law, a drug is only defined when it has, I mean, it's defined as something being listed in the schedules of either the 1961 or 1971 convention. Um, in terms of cannabis, we have five drugs, five substances listed in the convention, cannabis, cannabis resin, uh, so-called extract and tincture of cannabis, uh, Delta 90HC, and the isomers of Delta 90HC. Um, these five drugs are subject to, to different uh, regimes. They are placed in different schedules. We'll see that after. But uh, I want to underline the fact that only these five substances, drugs, are subject to the regime of these convention and only when they are used for medical and scientific purposes. So cannabidiol, for instance, CBD is not listed in the schedule. It's not subject to, to the control of the convention. It's not a drug according to the convention. Uh, similarly, the plant, cannabis plant, or other part of the plant, leaves, seeds, roots, are not drugs according to the meaning of the convention. 
the only five drugs that we have are uh, these ones, cannabis, cannabis resin in Schedule 1 and Schedule 4 of the 61 Convention at the highest level of control, considered to have a, a lot of harms and very little medical use. Uh, extract and tinctures, a bit lower in the 61 Convention, only in Schedule 1. And then in the 1971 Convention, we have the isomers of THC in the schedule, schedule 1, so at a higher level of control than Delta 90HC, which is in Schedule 2. We see that this is a screenshot of Schedule 4 of the 61 Convention. You see that the, the neighboring drugs uh, in Schedule 4 are really um, a different kind than, than cannabis and cannabis resin. So it, it's kind of curious, which brings me to the Expert Committee on Drug Dependence and this World Health Organization, which is responsible for this strange um, status of scheduling of, of, of cannabis in, in international treaties. So everybody knows WHO for its um, leading role in, in international uh, health policy, some might say international health politics. WHO also has a, a role of, of uh, standard setting and expertise in terms of different fields related to health, to global health. And one of these is the topic of drug dependence and these uh, medicines that have a potential for uh, producing um, dependence or so-called ill effects. Again, the ECDD, this Expert Committee on Drug Dependence, also carries the mandate of WHO to uh, review and assess substances and recommend the, the level of scheduling that should apply in uh, 1961 and 1971 convention. So they, they are a body of independent scientific experts convened to, um, to, to issue recommendations um, of the appropriate level of control to apply. Uh, this is the timeline of their discussions on cannabis. So uh, one year after the foundation of, of WHO in 1947, the expert committee was uh, created and, and it's, it's been uh, quite uh, quickly reviewing cannabis but as you can see if you look closer they have been doing really informal discussion without any kind of uh, thorough um, documentation or, or even methodological approach uh, until 1978 when they uh, reviewed for the first time THC um, with um, um, you know a real scientific uh, review, let's say, um, evidence-based uh, review. Um, but that was a bit late since uh, THC had been scheduled in 1971 without any kind of uh, sound scientific analysis. Same thing for cannabis. Uh, in 1989 and 90, they, they review THC again and they recommend that Delta 9 and only only Delta 9, not the other isomers, be lowered of one level into the 1971 convention. That's why we have this different approach for, for Delta 9 TC and the isomers as we saw uh, earlier. And uh, very recently, here we can see it, uh, WHO and the expert committee has been undertaking a series of um, various kinds of reviews of, of all uh, substances we, we, we are referring to uh, in recent years. The outcome of these reviews um, is really interesting and really uh, complex, so I'll try to make it quick. Um, first of all, they reviewed CBD, even though CBD is not a drug under control, but some countries um, suggested that it might, it might be relevant for control. Uh, that's not the opinion of the experts committee that says that pure CBD, insofar it's not a drug under control, should not be scheduled. And therefore, since they don't recommend to schedule it, it cannot be scheduled by the international community. Uh, in addition, they realized that um, the, the medicine that we are talking about, because again, when we talk about CBD in the context of this ECDD recommendation, it's only medicines. We are not talking about food, food supplements, um, cosmetics, or whatever things that are considered industrial purposes under the convention and which are not uh, of the topic of today. Um, they noted that, for instance, in Epidiolex, which is a almost pure CBD medicine, uh, you have some trace amount of THC, which on its own is under control. So the expert committee recommended uh, this footnote exempting CBD medicines from control in the case they have trace amount of THC. 
On cannabis and cannabis resin, they recommended to delete it from Schedule 4, which is, uh, as we saw, the highest level of control. Um, in the case of extract and tinctures, which is something that this is um, the convention, how the convention explains what, what extracts and tinctures are, which is not clear at all. And the expert committee has been trying to review it and was also confusing. In the end, extract tinctures and cannabis resin are, uh, could be the same thing or are, you know, variations of, of the same thing. So they recommended simply deleting this terminology, extract and tincture, knowing that uh, when a drug is scheduled, the preparation of that drug are subject to the same level of control. So they consider extract and tincture are preparation of, of cannabis and therefore uh, there is no need for the, this double uh, uh, scheduling. Um, in addition, they also recommended that some preparation, which in the end will be led up to the decision of every national uh, medicines uh, authority, uh, some preparation of cannabis be um, subject to the control of Schedule 3, which is, as we saw earlier, the, the lowest um, level of control in the 1961 convention. This is a way to allow uh, a much easier access for uh, some uh, medical preparation of cannabis. Uh, including a very, uh, very reduced level of, con of mandatory control to, to be applied. And finally, for THC, uh, so dronabinol, um, which is natural and synthetic, it's the same um, substance again, the stereoisomers of, of dronabinol and the isomers of uh, dronabinol, the other isomers, the expert committee recommended to um, the same thing for, for both, which is basically to put them, to take them out of the 1971 convention and put them in the 1961 convention, which is uh, basically, as you can see here in blue, it's the current uh, status of scheduling of THC, really complex, depends on isomers and stereoisomers. The expert committee CDD recommended the, the what you can see here in, in red, which is one simple uh, uh, single uh, level of scheduling, which is the same uh, as cannabis. So this is the current status of, of scheduling that we have for, for cannabis. And the uh, WHO ECDD recommended this uh, outcome. Uh, so it's, as we see, um, at a lower level compared to to earlier, uh, to current scheduling, uh, it would be at the lower level. It would be uh, only lo localized in the 1961 convention. So uh, also maybe more easy to interpret. And we would have the possibility for some medicines to be controlled under uh, schedule three, which is a much lower level of control, which is a way to uh, increase access and availability of these preparation for medical uh, purposes, as well as uh, research. Uh, I will now let the floor for my colleague Michael Kravitz that would give you a couple of words about the way, what we can expect from um, the adoption or not of this recommendation and the way uh, we can uh, move along with that. Thank you, Kenzie. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here today for IACM special event. It's been such an honor to work side by side with Kenzie these last five years or so inside the World Health Organization and inside the United Nations. Uh, Kenzie and I are both activists that have worked at the national level in our respective countries. And we represent really the entire cannabis movement, the worldwide cannabis movement at the United Nations. Um, we support the World Health Organization recommendations. We feel they've done a very good job, a, a competent and thorough job, and have come up with sound recommendations that taken in, in total uh, represent sound medical advice and should be followed as such. Uh, the big picture is you know, that the United Nations Drug Control Program is mostly known for prohibition. However, it really is very deeply involved in access to medicine of these controlled substances that are written into the treaty, like cannabis. And it, as such, uh, it's important that the United Nations follow this guidance and follow the World Health Organization recommendations. There's a clear choice here before the United Nations. You know, do they follow the evidence and have an evidence-based policy or do they abandon the evidence in favor of a political outcome uh, and allow the treaty to continue to erode as our national programs that we're setting up, uh, many of them are not 
coordinating with the United Nations the way they should be uh, if the United Nations drug control program was fit to purpose and supported medical access. The World Health Organization has spoken. Their recommendation uh, changes their longstanding position that was from like the 1950s where they said that cannabis was a dangerous drug that had little known medical value and it was very uh, unknown. So it should be treated as a uh, research only substance. And now they feel that it's ready for wide scale access to humans to be used as a medicine. And they acknowledge that it has very strong medical value and they've made recommendations to implement that. So that's where we are. So on the 2nd of December, um, 53 countries of the United Nations will decide on this recommendation. As you see, it looks, um, well, it's complex and we don't know all the positions yet, but it looks like only the recommendations that are really symbolical um, will be adopted and therefore that no change will take place in the concrete international law of medical cannabis products. Therefore, we will be uh, with the exact same um, situation that we have been having for the last um, at least during the 20 years of existence of the IACM and uh, this situation is uh, that of a diversity of models as Michael just said uh, which are not necessarily uh, coordinated or uh, similar or, or cannot necessarily interact one with the other because they they miss this coordination uh, that international law provides, but at the same time, they allow for a more uh, diverse um, way of providing access to uh, cannabis medicines, and they allow for um, maybe a, a sort of experimentation of the different models uh, to find the best way forward for these um, policies and programs. So thank you for your attention. You can find all of this information on, on that uh, website.